done so much for us. Lord, trying to find the way to repay you, Lord, we can only say thanks. We can only say thank you, Lord. We can only say hallelujah. Someone said if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. But Lord, since we don't have that, we're going to use the one we got, the one you gave us, Amen. to give you the praise and glory. So now as we come to this point in this hour of the service, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. You must take over. We cannot do nothing. We are nothing but a lump of clay in your hand. But we're in your hand. And only we can function and do and accomplish your will by being in your hand. Break up the follow ground, Lord. Heal in the name of Jesus. Set free and deliver right now. Lord, we decree and declare it in the name of Jesus. As your word go forward, God, Lord, break the chains in the name of emotional, physical, whatever, God. Loose the bands, right? <laughs> Glory to God. I thank you, Lord. Oh, God, because you're able, Lord, when we tried everything else and everything else had failed. Lord, you, hallelujah, you never fail. And we praise you right now. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put those hands together as you take your seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord we are. We are so glad, amen, to be here on this lovely morning. First we want to do, uh, first we want to give honor, amen, to our pastor, amen, in his absence. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for our pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the shepherd. Amen. And may I say we do honor all our ministers, elders, deacons, children, childrenettes, everybody. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you being here today. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. I am so glad. There's no other place I'd rather be. Amen. Through the midst of it all. God has been good to us and now that we're able to come back together in one voice on one accord to lift him up. Amen. Amen. The songwriter said, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The reason why he purposed that, he said, look, God has done something for all of us. And look, 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 I may not be able to hear your testimony, you may not be able to hear my testimony, but one thing we can all do and hear each other is let's give God the glory. In a corporate praise. So we thank God. Amen. We do ask for your prayers. Amen. And thank God. We're looking at the clock. Amen. So we, we want to get and do everything on time. Right, Sister Macko? Amen. Right. Well, I'm just going to come and just say a few things. Give a lecture. And I'll be out your way. Uh, I hope you didn't come expecting. Now, you know. I, I turned uh, another year older about eight days ago. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, my body lets me know that I'm getting older. So I'm not dynamic. I'm not one. We got some dynamic preachers. So I'm going to keep my foot right here on the ground. I'm not going to walk on nothing but the floor, nothing else. I'm not going to walk on anything else. Amen, amen. Hey, that, that's, that, that's the dynamic preacher. That's the dynamic preacher that can do that. Amen. I was uh, listening to it. Amen. What a word. What a word on last week. Amen. But I'm just letting you know, if y'all look at, hey, now what you going to do? With? I'm saying right here. <laughs> I'm old. There you go. If I walk on something, fall, it'll be on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> right then, right now. Oh, did you see this weapon fall? No, no, no you ain't getting me. No. <laughs> That's right. Amen. But we thank God again. We thank God for everything that has been said and done. If you have your Bibles, let us go straight to the Word of God. We're going to be coming from Luke the seventh chapter we're going to read verses 18 through 23 I want you to keep your finger there because while we're cooking while we're still adding to the mix I want you to turn to st. John the seventh chapter 
St. John, the seventh chapter. And we're just going to read a few verses out of that. We're going to read from St. John. We're going to read that first, and then we're going to be taking our main text and theme from Luke chapter 17, chapter 7. Verses 1823. Now, say amen if you have it and you would ask you to stand. You know what? Let me let me just throw in 37. I just like 37. I, I was going to use, I, I got in my notes 38 and 39, but let me just throw it. It ain't going to cost you nothing. Amen. Amen. It's free. It's free. So, yeah, John 7, and I'm going to start at the 37th verse. I know I have 38 probably, but it's only one verse up. Apple dumpling, amen. It reads, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, On that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. All right, now 38. He who believes in me as the scripture has said, notice, as the scripture has said. Right. Out of his heart, mine says heart, but I believe in the King James it says belly, which means the same thing. Out, right, right down from the inner, out, right there, right. will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. Go over to Luke chapter 7. And we'll start at verse 18. And you'll find these words. It says, Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Look at verse 21. And that very hour, somebody say that very hour. He cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits. And to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell the things you have seen and heard. That the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. You may be seated. If we would put a tag on this text tonight, I'm sorry, this morning. Amen. Look, I'm already on. I'm ready for the barbecue already. Amen. If we would tag this sermon for this morning, it would be any questions? Amen. Ask Jesus. Amen. Amen. You have any questions? Ask Jesus. Amen. In the late seventies, early eighties, when I was growing up, there was a commercial that came on and the commercial the scene was these two young men it was in the setting of a kitchen and these two young men coming in and then you can see the snow out and so presumably they were out shoveling and they came in and they had uh, a lady cooking and when they came in the one was named Frankie but I know the other one his name was Joey so Frankie's mother said to him, Joey, would you like to stay for dinner? And Joey proceeded to take off his coat. Before he did that, he said, what are you having? She said, spaghetti. And Joey said, 
Oh yeah, I'm staying. So he goes to take off his coat. And he looks and he says, homemade spaghetti. You know, he ain't got his coat off all the way. He said, homemade spaghetti? And mom said, no, it's ragu. <laughs> and Joey said, spaghetti sauce from a jar? Uh-uh, I'm going home. <laughs> he put back on his coat. And he said, he said Joe, 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 come on, come say. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's not homemade. She said, oh, no, it, 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 it's homemade. It's homemade. And Joey said, well, it was homemade. He said, do, do, do it have fresh tomatoes, fresh plump tomatoes? Mama said, it's in there. Joey said, do it have fresh minced garlic and, 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 and onions and, and, and stuff like that? Mom said, it's in there. Joey said, well, does it have spices and basil and basil or whatever? Every, whatever goes into that. Mama said, it's in there. Joey went to ask one more question. But before Joey could get that question out, Mama took the spoon, had some sauce on it, and as Joey began to open his mouth, he said, well, does it have? Hmm. He said, hmm, that's homemade. He says, I'm staying. Took off his coat. Well, the commercial was probably shorter than what I just said, but I wanted you to get it in case you didn't see the commercial. Well, I love call and response. Amen. They just mess up the message. Amen. Oh, everybody trying to get on the tape. Amen. But thank you anyway. Thank you. Hmm. I better, I better go on up now, Pastor. Amen. But the thing I wanted you to see or wanted to express was that Joey looked at something and he already had one expectation and said, well, you know, that couldn't be. But when he was told, he didn't believe or he had some doubt, so he had to ask questions. And today I wonder sometime as we walk in this journey called life, right. as believers, as called out ones, I wonder, have you had any questions? Because that, that, that's just part of life. Sometimes, you know, and, and, and the thing that I remember growing up being in church, when it concerned the things about God, they always told me, whatever you do, don't ask God those questions. Because it seems as though you don't believe in God. And I had a problem with that. I'm like, well, well, you know. Okay, really? If, if I got a question and, and, and it means I don't believe in God? Well, uh, uh, here's one thing. I, I believe I can ask God questions because guess what? God asks questions. Oh, you don't believe me? Uh, uh, you remember the first question he asked when man fell? He said, Adam, where art thou? I know what you're saying. Oh, preacher. Well, 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 he knew. He knew what he had. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, he was asking the question. He said, look, look, look. I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because guess when you find yourself in certain situations or things you just don't understand in the law, look, look, you ought to, before you do anything, you just ought to stop and ask questions. Right. And be careful how you ask questions, huh? Mm -hmm. Asking the right questions. Here you go. I, I, I was thinking about that, and, and I'm gonna help all you ladies. I'm gonna help you ladies. You got you got husbands or boyfriends, booze. Have you ever? Have you ever drove? You know you're driven, and he's driving, and he's in the same spot, 45 minutes. Look like he's going around in circles. <laughs> No, wait a minute, we was here 15 minutes ago. He go, and guess what? He keeps doing it over and over again. Women, I'm going to help you out. You're going to thank me. Don't make a statement. Don't do like this. Honey, we lost. Because you know what? You're going to get mad. Don't do that. I'm, help I'm helping you out. You know what you do? You say, Ask him a question, say, honey, 
Where are we? <laughs> Guess what? He got to stop. <laughs> he won't get mad. <laughs> and if he's honest, he'll tell you the truth. <laughs> that's just free. That's it. But again, in life, we have questions. And the thing is that there's nothing wrong with the questions. Just got to make sure, hey, look, we'll be open and honest enough to ask them. Going to the text, we see here, this is opening up in verse 18. It's uh, uh, letting us know, or rather, yeah, verse 18, it says that John, uh, disciples had reported everything that Jesus was teaching and doing. And John called two of his disciples. Amen. And before I go any further, what, 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 what this helps us to understand, and what I love about it, Brother Sean, is that John the Baptist, now he had already heard, now I, when, when you get time, go and read this Friday. He heard that Jesus had healed the blind man. He heard that Jesus had raised up a boy who was dead. He had heard these things, and it looked like, it looked like, oh, wow, that's great, that's good. But yet, John had a question. And what I like about it, and what it helps us to understand, is that this is John the Baptist. You know John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. John the Baptist, he was the first one, had a, 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 a mega church, because there were many that had followed him. John the Baptist, he was a good preacher. He was a good preacher. I mean, he preached, and they came out by the thousands. John the Baptist was baptizing, and yet... And, oh, wait a minute. And he was thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. You're talking about John the Baptist. You talk, If anybody who was be a high religious leader, somebody that we could look up and say, oh, yeah, that man got it. He got it. He's filled. He's got it. And he was filled. But yet in all of that, he still had questions. Just let me know that because look here, I don't care how saved, how sanctified you are, how Holy Ghost filled you are, guess what? There are going to come times in your life where you're going to come to a point where you wonder, mm, is it worth it? Wait, 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 wait. I wonder why, why is it not going the way that I think it'll go? Why? Because guess what? We're all humans. Right. I know you say, oh, look, 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 preacher, you can come up and, and, and preach and put a smile on your face. You know why? Because we got to do that. I heard a preacher say on last night, he said, pastors have to, they go through just like you do. Preachers go through stuff just like you do. The only difference is that the pastor has to come up and as he goes through, he puts it behind him and he comes up and he puts a smile on his face and preach the word of God to the people. So you don't have the luxury as members. Members, when they get mad, they don't come to church. Don't come to church. Ain't saying amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, all right. Yo, I ain't getting no amens, but it's true. It's true. Oh, my God bless you. Well, God bless you. I heard it. But we're all here, man. And we have questions. And what I love about John, he don't do like most folk. He don't go to Reverend Radcliffe and say, hey, what do you think about this guy over there? Have you, you know what burns me up? Somebody want to know about me. I'm standing right there, and they ask somebody else. They don't know me. Much as we've been together, amen, 30 years. 30? Amen. amen. <laughs> That's some stuff she knows most about me, but she don't know all about me. So if you got a question about somebody or to somebody, here's the thing you ought to do. Don't ask them. Don't be sucking me. Don't be speculating. And how many times have we gotten into trouble? I know I've gotten into trouble. Don't raise your hand. I don't speculate on somebody else's opinion, which they had already a dislike. And so now I'm just conforming to somebody else's opinion instead of going and getting it for myself. Yeah. It's important. And this is what John teaches us. Look, you got a question about somebody? Don't ask around. Go directly to the source. Right. Find a way. John was in prison, but guess what? He found a way. 
Aren't you glad? No, 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 no matter what, 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 what you find yourself constrained in, there's always a way. Glory to God. And so he went to John. Here we are. In verse 20. And I like what they said. They said, we from John the Baptist, and we got a question. He wants to know. And he makes it, we. He says, are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? And I just want to point out three things. And look, I'm just about halfway done. I love, look. Ooh, when you read the Bible, take your time and read it. You'd be like, Jesus, you are the most coolest man I know. No wonder we used to sing the song, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. How I long to be like him. So meek and lonely, so I am holy. How I long to be like him. I know y'all looking at me like, what is that? What he making up? That's a song. It's a song. This is Barbara. It's a song. way and it helps us because you see it, it helps me and hopefully it helps you sometimes to be effective with having the answer is how you answer the question yeah, right amen now, look, now he already was uh, uh, already uh, had an attitude when he asked hey are you the one you come on what's going on and if I was Jesus I might have said well, what do you think you heard stuff huh what do you think? What, what, what is your problem? How dare you? I ain't talking about y'all. Don't y'all can say, man. Y'all talking about others. I'm talking about other people. But that was that was I was Jesus. Aren't you glad I'm not Jesus? And in fact, I'm glad some of you are not Jesus. Amen. <laughs> but look at the way he answers. And I want to point out three things that'll help us. It's going to help all of us. Everybody, listen to me. Everybody who's on this spiritual journey, who have asked questions, and in somewhere in your journey, you had either doubt or your expectations were not met. This is going to help you in the journey. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Look at the first thing, the way he answers, the way Jesus answers. Verse 22. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell. Stop. Oh, I'm sorry. Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. That's verse 22. Stop right there. The first thing that Jesus, and the way he answers, he asked them, look here. If you really want an effective answer to your question, the first thing you got to do is experience Christ for yourself. Amen. Amen. It's amazing that how you want to find out more. And look, there are some things you can learn in class. But there are going to be times when some things class just ain't going to do it. You got to experience it for yourself. Can I get a witness here? That's why he said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, he says, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then you'll find rest. You got to ex you got to put Christ on to really experience what it is about him that makes him different from it. what it is that makes him the coming one. Well, not only the coming one, but what makes him the one. Yeah. Let me get the little, 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 do you really need ex do you need to experience him? Yes. I, I was thinking about they got so many books on parenting. Right. Oh, 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 just go on Amazon. Oh, look, they got all these books to tell you how to raise your children. And look, some of them are good books too. They are. I read one. Well, a page. I read. <laughs> and they're good books. But let me tell you something. As a parent, there's some stuff that the book couldn't tell me. Because when I went and stuff came up, Tina, I went to the book, and the book didn't have the answers. Good God Almighty. So therefore, there are some things I had to learn for 
myself. I had to expect. So at all points, saying when he asked, answers them, he says the first thing you need to do is come, come and experience. That's why he said, come and see, experience me for yourself. Yeah, right. Stop trying to live a life outside of Jesus, trying to find out who He is. Step in. Yeah. I read about what what what, 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 what was it? Psalms thirty four and eight. It says, "Oh, taste and see." Lord is good. Yeah. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Yeah. You know what I thought about Brother Kirby? See, when I used to preach that scripture taste, I, mean, I used to be like this. Like Joe, just, just a little bit. But Mo, it changed. It changed my concept on tasting. You know when it changed? When I couldn't get the remote and my wife had on the cooking channel. <laughs> and I thought, and, and, I, and I got a revelation, pieces. I got a revelation. You know when they have a dish, and you know how to, <laughs> I had to laugh, Bishop, one time. Me and my wife, he was out, and I ordered something, this meat, and I'm doing like this. Now, you were good and well, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> but you know how they do on the cooking shows? They look at, they put everything together. Y'all see? Y'all seen those cooking children? They put everything there. They just take a little bite, you know, a little piece. But they cut it, they put it all together, and then they put it in their mouths and they're chewing it. And then all of a sudden they say, well, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, it, it, the, uh, the beef is well cooked. Uh, I taste the acidity, but somehow the uh, mango kind of offset the uh, asparagus and so forth. And so, you know, but, 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 but overall, it was good. Oh, I, I, and I was I'm like, what? You found all that <laughs> in a taste? But you know what? They, they, they had to put it on the inside of them. Good God Almighty. Woo. They couldn't just stick, they couldn't be saved on Sunday and then Monday do something else. Wednesday become saved and then Thursday back in the world. No, no, no. Well, no they had to put it all in. They had to get it all in. And all Jesus said, taste, put me inside. Let me live in you all the way. And guess what? You don't see how good I am. Why? Because you tasted of me. Yeah. And you let me look more than the food. The food didn't have to tell it. They knew it. Amen. The food worked for itself, and Jesus let him work for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, somebody, I got to go, but somebody told me, he said, you know what, Rev, this Jesus thing don't work for me. I said, really? What, what? He said, yeah, it don't work for me. Look, I ain't got no money. I said, well, did you budget? Budget? I said, all right, you answer that question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and look, I got problems. Uh huh. Who don't have problems? And the thing is, they wanted Jesus to be the genie in the bottle. Yeah, right. But it's not that. So they experience him on Sunday, come and shout. And then Monday, they back to their own thing. No, no, no. Look, Jesus wants to be Lord. He is your savior, and now after he has saved you, you gotta let him be your Lord. And one of the things back in the olden time, ancient times, you, you, you could tell a good Lord by the way his servants were, uh, were, were, were uh, operating with him. If he was a good Lord, he had good servants. If he was a bad Lord, he had bad servants. And I said, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. God, you don't have to do good for the Lord because the Lord is already good. But the Lord is so good that even when you do bad, he's still good. And guess what? He'll make sure goodness come in you. Oh, now I understand what David said. Shed though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil thou art with me. Surely, goodness. Taste and see. Get them all the way in and see that the Lord is good. Now look what else he did. So he tells them, first of all, you got to experience me for yourself. Experience what I just take me all the way in. Amen. Secondly, look at the second way he answers him, which will help you. It says that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, 
the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Yeah, if you take a note, the second thing, the first thing it says you got to do is experience Christ for yourself. The second thing you got to do is know the scriptures for yourself. Amen. Look at what Jesus did. He invites them and then if you're, you, you got to study, he gives them the scriptures that verify who he is. Don't raise your hand. But if you are a graduate from high school, college, trade school, whatever school, what is the one thing that you got that can make me believe that you graduated from school? A diploma. You got some kind of script. Oh my God. You got some kind of paper that says you met the requirements. Oh my God. Oh, I'm going to preach this thing. Oh my God. Oh, I got to get my note. You got something that'll back you up that says, hey, you graduated from Harvard, from Yale. Well, you got the paper. And Jesus said, look here. To prove who I am, I'm going to give you a scripture. And guess what he gave him? He gave him Isaiah 61. Right. Right. Can somebody get that for me? And guess what? I'm going to say that while I give it. When you experience Christ like the scriptures say I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. The problem that most folks are having is they're hearing word, but it ain't the word. They're hearing scriptures, but it ain't the scriptures. So somebody read that for me. 61, verse 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God. The Spirit of the Lord. And I, I'm going to get to that too. Go ahead. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings. The first thing. Unto the meek. Preach good tidings. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, look, Jesus didn't come to be your genie. He came to what? Preach good tidings to those who are poor, to those who don't have. And guess what? It don't even stop there. To those who do have, guess what? You really ain't got it all like you think you do. You still need the word. Oh, and, I, and look, this is how look, this is how I know that you need God. Because look, how many wasn't it just a couple of weeks ago? I thought this woman had it already told her story. The one who committed suicide. Her, she made pocketbooks and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Had it all. And then and not only that, but then the following week, the cooking guy. He committed suicide. He had his own show. Looked like he had it all. Boom, look, the glass always looked green on the other side. You are, look, I don't care how much you acquire, you are going to need the Lord on your side. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose? Oh, I want that. Oh, I wish I could be like him. Oh, I wish I could go get some good news. I am rich. Hallelujah. Why? Because I got the gospel. Yeah. Calm down, Scott. Calm down. Calm down. Hallelujah. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the broken party. Nobody can do it like Jesus. Let me say it again. Nobody can do it like Jesus. You know why? Because no man knows the heart, but is desperately wicked. Say the spirit of man. But God, who knows the intent of every man's heart. Amen. And look, since he's such a, he's a heart specialist. My grandma used to testify. Look, he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Y'all don't know that about testimony. But look, look, that means that God is the only one who can do it. Yeah. And he's doing, look, look, he's proving it by scripture. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty Ooh. to the captive. Uh huh. If you're captive in your mind, no, no, wait, wait, wait. If you're captive in sin, uh -huh. Come on. he's ready to free you. Yeah. But you got to first experience him for yourself. Yeah. The biggest problem is sin. No, 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 no. No, Rev. You know, uh, we got a trade deficit, and you know, we got to make sure this trade deficit, and you know, so forth. No, 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 Rev. We, 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 we got the economic problems. Let me tell you something. If you get down to the base root of the problem, 
there would be no problem. There would be no problem in economics because if people live like the way the word said, everybody would have everything in common. But because of sin and greed and lust and deceit, oh, y'all look at me like I'm strange. Y'all look at me like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, there are no people who don't have greed, who don't who cheat you out of your last dime? Sin. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Oh my God. How many of us are sitting right here? Oh my God. I'm going to turn this way. How many are sitting right here and still in prison? How many are sitting right here still angry over stuff? How many are sitting right here? And I mean, not just angry, we've been angry for years. That is a prison. Yes. Go ahead. I'm almost done. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Stop. Read that again. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord of the Lord. This is not about your mama and them, not about Pookie and them, not about your boo and them. This is about the Lord. Amen. And if anybody is preaching or teaching anything other than Jesus, walk away. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, I got two. Amen. That's good. Go ahead. Because again, it is the Lord. He is capable, qualified. He got papers backing him up. Yes. Not only do he got papers backing him up, but he got the power yes. backing him up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Come on. Come on. And the day of vengeance Woo. of our God uh -huh. to comfort all. That amen, amen. God bless you. That's it. Amen. Just that. They got it. They got it. Know the scripture for yourself. And we are living in a day and a time where the scriptures are being twisted. Other gospels are being preached. Paul even said, there is no other gospel. He said, let that man be a curse that preach any other gospel than what we have preached. What is the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to give you something else. And then we're going to move on. Go, go. Go to 2 Timothy 2.15. Read that for me. Know the scriptures. And in knowing the scriptures, look here. here go, this is going to help you out in your Bible study. One, read it. Just what it says. Interpret it. Just what it says. And apply it. Just like it says. Yes, amen. Sometimes you'll read the scripture and try to get your own personal interpretation. There's no private interpretation of, interpretation of the gospel. But Bible will interpret itself. Let me give you an example how you can sometimes be twisted. I believe it's in uh, Psalms. I think I wrote it down. Psalms 37, 4. It says, delight thyself in the Lord always. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Oh man, we can shout. Yeah, yeah. That's what preacher, I'm going home and delight myself in the Lord. And guess what? I got a desire. Man, this girl been walking by. I got, look, Lord, I've been waiting for her. God, that brother, oh, I've been waiting. <laughs> oh, I seen that house. Oh, that car is mine. I'm going to delight myself in the, in the Lord. And he will give me the desires of my heart. That is not the proper interpretation because if you reduce it to him giving you your desires then he becomes the genie in the bottle but when you delight yourself in the Lord you are so wrapped and encompassed in him guess what he says he will give you the desires so now look you don't know what to pray for but have you ever had something you just like man why, why am I praying for that it's God giving it to you because you delighted yourself in him. You delighted yourself in his word. Look, you really didn't ask for anything. All you wanted was Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. And so now, you, so look, here you go. What was our, our prayer? Pray the word. Delight in the word and get the desires from your heart from the word. You got it. You got it. Go ahead. Come on, y'all. Listen. Study. Study. Show thyself approved. Take time. Turn off the internet. Turn off. Stop binge watching. Look, look, look. Study. Take time. Amen. Show 
girlfriend, you're not going out today. Tell boyfriend, you ain't going out today. Why? I got to study. And listen, let me tell you something. Y'all may think it's crazy, and I know y'all ain't going to do it. But for you who's single, when you start talking spiritually about, hey, 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 uh, look, I want to I wanna go out to, uh, to, the, to, to the roller derby or somewhere. Oh, okay. But wait a minute, I got I, I to gotta study First John. What? You don't know what kind of person you got. Uh, Any time they say what? <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm trying to help you. If you find yourself, in, listen. Let me help you again. If you find yourself in a t in in, a, in that moment of weakness, young man, young woman. You find yourself in the moment like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Oh, I don't want to. Is it like you just about to go there? You know what you do? Just before it starts, you holler out, Jesus! Yeah. Say. <laughs> I dare you to go to scripture. I dare you. Yeah, right. All right, go ahead. Study to show myself approved unto who? Unto God. A workman. Go ahead, read it. Uh huh. Working it, working it. We're workmen. Once we experience Christ, it's, it's, it, we got to take the ownership of doing the word, studying of the word, and look, going back to the word so that you know. So this is what helps clear your doubts. Yeah. And can I tell you this? It'll help you with your expectations. Listen, I, and this is just me, some people believe, or well, some theologians have accounted, that John might have doubted because he was in prison and Jesus, you know, where was Jesus? I, I, I tend not to think that he doubted. And I tell you why. Remember, John was at, well, first of all, the Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. So guess what? He knew God had sent him. And he told him, he said, the one whom the spirit come down on the dove, that'll be the one. John was in the pool. Jesus came. When he baptized Jesus, amen, he, he saw it. He saw it for himself. So I don't think he thought it, but maybe there was some expectations. And one reason I think it might be is because John was preaching about, you know, the judgment, the coming of the Lord and the judgment and repentance. And then when he hears something, guess what he hear? He hear Jesus healing, raising the dead and all this. See, it's time to get the whole gospel. So you, you, you be careful of people that go from one extreme to the other. You got some that preach condemnation. You're going to hell. Hell, 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 hell. Yeah, you're going to hell. Hell. <laughs> and then you got the other end of those who say, you're blessed, you're blessed. I see you're blessed, you're blessed. You're blessed. Come on, you're blessed, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. <laughs> you got two extremes. You got to know how to have the balance and even with the prophet said, preach the whole word of God. Eat the whole word. But the gospel, it will what? Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Yes. Amen. If somebody keeps telling you you're doing good all the time and you don't do nothing wrong, Amen. you better go to the word. Get yes. both sides. Read, I'm sorry, did you finish? Rightly dividing. Oh, rightly. Do you know what that means, rightly dividing? That's, he, Paul is using something what, what a surgeon, uh, surgeon used. How many have been in, uh, operate, under operation? All right, good. So when you go in an operation, you don't want no joker who's been out all night drinking, just now sobering up, and he said, okay, you next for the operation? I jump off that table. <laughs> But when he says rightly divide, he's saying like a surgeon takes a sharp knife and he got to be precise. Am I right? Am I right? Right. Well, look, look, he, that's why he, look, when you're going to get them, 
them certain surgeries, I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna, but you get them certain, sur certain surgeries to remove some stuff, they, they, they draw the lines, he got to be precise on it. One wrong move. That's all it takes, one wrong move, and you're done. That's what Paul is saying, rightly divided. That's why you take the time to study. That's why you take the time. Get your concordance. Get your Bible dictionaries. Look up the culture. Do some studying. Oh, they didn't get my... Do it. Oh, I was just looking. I thought my subject was up there. But anyway, get it right. Because guess what? So many are going to hell because they're hearing a wrong word. And some are going to hell because they don't they know the word but don't want to abide in the truth. Amen. And so we have that. And then lastly, look what he says in verse 23. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Amen. The third thing Jesus says to them is be blessed. Now wait a minute, preacher. Didn't you just say about being on one side, about blessings, and now you're saying Jesus answered them and said, be blessed? Yeah, let's go to the scriptures. Notice he didn't say be blessed with a new house. He didn't say be blessed with a brand new car. He didn't say be blessed with new shoes or whatever or material things. You know what he said? He said, look, 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 look. Don't look at me, look. He says, blessed is he. Oh my God. Who is not offended in because of me. That's when you know you're blessed. What does the word offended mean? The word offended means to cause a dislike or vexation. Here you go. Because things are not going through your expectation. Amen. You don't have a dislike. Or rather not, not even a dislike. But a vexation in your spirit. And when I look at that word. No, I, I, I did like you did. I, uh, you know, I was like okay. Look at the word. Offended. Take it. Split it apart. Is off. Ended. Now. Have you ever used that term? Have you ever seen something when it went good and near the end it was kind of off? You know, you sang good in the beginning, but somewhere in the end, that last part, you was off. You did good, but guess what? You kind of off. The picture is a little off ended. That means you're not finished fin finish yet. So blessed is he who's not off ended about me. Blessed is he who's not vexed about me. Blessed is he who, guess what, can still stand and say, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to trust in God. And so, in order to be blessed, and in order to be not off ended, you got to have something. One, you got to have the scriptures. The scriptures will help you so that you won't be off ended. I, I, I'm going to say this and I'm done. I'm, I'm going to close up my Bible. Because sometimes, you know, we can get off ended. But let me tell you a story. I, I, when I was younger, uh, I wanted this toy, but my grandmother wouldn't buy it for me. So I would go over to my friend's house across the street. And he would have this toy. He'd pull it out. And guess what? It was a doll that was about, about four feet. And guess what you would do? And I, I forget the name, but you know what you would do to this doll? You would throw a punch at it. And it would fall down. <laughs> But a few seconds later, <laughs> y'all remember that? What's it called? Knock 'em, knock 'em, box 'em. <laughs> Something. Reckless, you hit him to the left, he'll fall to the left. Yeah. But just wait. He come right back up. Knock him out to the right, but he's coming back up. 
sometimes there's somebody in love, I had expectations and look like, look, I thought everybody would love me. I thought nobody would bring up my past, but somebody brought up my past and guess what? It knocked me down. But I come to tell you, you're getting back up. Oh, that's something to shout about right there. I was going to hoop on this one, but no, no, I, I, I got I got to just say, you're coming back up. Yeah. And you remember the scripture? You know why you're coming back up? Do you remember the scripture in John? He says, Jesus said, on that great day of the feast, and, and, and said, he who believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of concerning the Holy Ghost. And see, some of y'all, well, at least one of y'all, get excited about the fact that you get knocked down, but you're coming back up. But I forgot to tell you that the toy didn't come like that. My friend Floyd had to go get the toy out the toy box because guess what? It had no shape. It had no form. It was flat. Good God Almighty. So what we did, in order to get it up to his height, he go, he, yeah. then when he get tired, I take it. Yeah, well, it was safe back then, back in those days. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have to worry about then. He blown up, and finally, when we got it all blown up, it was able to, see, Left alone to itself, it would still be flat. Yeah. Left alone to itself, it would still have no form. Left alone to itself, it still wouldn't have been able to stand. Yeah. But until we blew our breath in that, it came up to full form. It was no longer flat. It was able to stand. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because if you believe on Him, yeah. you'll be able to get knocked down. But guess what? I'm coming back up. Woo! Glory to God, I'm coming. And look, it's not because of me, but because of what's in me. Woo! Glory to God. So the next time you got any questions and you've been knocked down, remember what's inside of you. It's the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, and when the Holy Ghost come, he will testify of me. Are there any questions? Red, why is this happening to me? You got, oh, okay, that's a good question. Red, I tired, I'm singing the choir, I usher. But why am I going through so much hell? It feels like I'm getting knocked down. But just wait, because guess what? You know what the Holy Ghost will say? He says, look, look, look. He says, look, though the earth be shaking and moved, guess what? God is a present help. In the time of trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. That will throw your best shot. I'm coming back up because of the Holy Ghost inside of me. You got any questions? Any questions? Any, 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 any. I'm saved, sanctified. And I don't know if I can hold on any longer. I wonder how am I going to. You guys, a good question. Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. Because not only will he give you the answer, he is the answer. Can I, I'm done. But can I say this? Can I say this? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, I told you, Holy Spirit is good. Here was the other thing. Again, Jesus never went about. You notice how he didn't ask, ask, answer this question? When they said, Are you the coming one? Right, right. He, he never said, I am. No, no, I am. If you look, I'll read Jesus. Really never said, yep, I'm him. I'm the Messiah. That's, yo, yo, the sign points right here. You know what? Either somebody else said it, somebody, and guess what? All he did had to do was, you said. Well, I said, are you the king of the Jews? Thou said. But he never said he was. Because guess what? And when Peter, he said, who the men said I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood, but my father, I didn't have to say it. It's going to be revealed to you. Why? Because you're experiencing Christ. You're experiencing the one. He don't have to tell. And you don't have to tell. You don't have to tell when you've been knocked down. You don't have to tell when you've been knocked out. 
Because guess what? It's going to be evident when you come back up. Because I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Spirit inside that'll keep me. And out, if I believe on Him, ask the Scriptures. Church, I'm telling you, the Scripture, get back to the Word. You're off ended. You're knocked off because you haven't got much word. And the Holy Ghost is yearning inside of you. Get the word. Experience it and do it. So you don't be off ended. Amen. Believe in me as the scripture has said. Out of your belly. Who flows rivers. You'll have joy like you never had before. Shall we stand? Amen. Any questions? Ask Jesus.